Hi, this is Misha. And from time to time, we like to revisit our favorite guns, or guns we have new news about. And this is definitely one here. This is the Czech SA VZ-58. And this is a Sporter manufactured recently in the Czech Republic by Czech Small Arms CSA formerly known as D-Technic and we've revisited the VZ-58 in the past but it's been a while we have done a video comparing it with the AK-47 and AKM we've done history videos so yeah but a new batch just got released by Checkpoint. This is the Military Select version here. So since it's cold and raining outside, I thought I would talk about this most recent little batch. And then, you know, kind of recap the history and just ramble on. Why not, guys? Why not? So, um, Checkpoint has been doing this. For quite some time now. They come in a box like this. You got a paper manual. For a time they were putting them on CD-ROMs, which was pretty funny, but now they've gone back to paper. So it's official, guys. Paper is more modern than uh, CD-ROMs today. They come with two mags each. These are original body, alloy body mags. Refinish by Checkpoint. They do have a U.S. follower and floor plate. And then they come with the military style cleaning kit in a drawstring bag. And then they come with the sling already on the gun, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, what do we have here? The checkpoint guns, the CSA guns, are made over there. They're imported as sporters. They come in with a thumbhole stock and a single stack magwell. And once here, checkpoint will open up the magwell and add various furniture this particular one the military select has the original wood chip kind of phenolic or fiberglass stuff often called either bakelite or slim jim or beaver barf it's an interesting furniture it's actually quite lightweight and extremely durable the wood and polymer mix makes it very durable. What's also nice about the design, the stock is just held onto the receiver with a bracket and a screw, meaning the same receiver can be made into a folder, which we'll look at the, the variant in a little while. So if you want to turn your fixed stock into a folder, you just need to remove a couple of screws, take this stock off, and put a folding stock on. So as imported today, we've got a checkmate machined receiver. Pretty glossy, I know. These have kind of a gloss finish on them like the military guns. We have the original style selector. Of course, it's blocked to semi only. These feed from standard magazines. Now, originally, the VZ-58 had a 15.4-inch barrel, so under 16 inches. These new manufactured guns actually have a 16.1 or 16.2, depending on who you ask, barrel. It is cold hammer forged and chrome lined, though. And really what's new with these, <clears throat> a few years ago, they started having threaded muzzles 
with removable muzzle nuts or brakes, whatever you ordered. These are threaded 14 by 1 right hand. But just now, CSA still has to ship them over without the bayonet lug, but Checkpoint has started installing a sight base with a working bayonet lug, which is really great. That was really only the, one of the few detractions to the imported guns versus the U.S. kit guns in the past was you lost your bayonet lug, but now even that's been remedied to the point that there's really no benefit to a U.S. gun. Today, these are mostly made from new manufactured parts, as the surplus parts in excellent condition have run out, but Check Small Arms has all the technical data purchased from CZ some time ago, and they have the rights to manufacture these, and they've been actually making these for a good number of years now, going on nearly 20. So the quality frankly, is every bit like a milled arsenal, say a Polytech Legend, or, yeah, a milled arsenal, a K. <clears throat> the U.S. parts are the magazine follower and floor plate, and the trigger group. Everything else is original as imported. But yeah, now that they're doing these with the lugs, I thought we would just do this video. Also, just because they haven't been around. Checkpoint is a small outfit. Check Small Arms is a small outfit. So they only send these over in pretty, pretty tiny batches. 10, 20, maybe 30 at a time. Well, why don't we get into kind of revisiting the history and some thoughts. And then we'll wrap back up by coming back around to the D-Technic and check small arms guns. How does that sound, folks? Well, we'll get on to it. What makes the BZ-58 and really many Czech guns interesting is how the Czechoslovakian government and people, even though communist and firmly within the Warsaw Pact, did their own thing. They didn't just follow and copy Soviet designs. Sometimes, you know, some countries would, would make a copy of an AK changing this or that, but it was still an AK. No, uh, Czechoslovakia was the only Warsaw Pact nation not to adopt the AK in any form or variant. <clears throat> and this wasn't new. Instead of adopting the TT-33 Tokarev, they adopted the VZ-52. Instead of adopting one of the Soviet submachine guns, they had first the SA-24-26, and then later the VZ-61 Scorpion. And instead of adopting the SKS, they went with the VZ-52, even in its own unique caliber, 762 by 45 So they very much did their own thing. And in fact, speaking of the VZ-52, it was a self-loading carbine. And by the way, all of those I just mentioned, we not only have videos on, we have comparisons with the Russian equivalents to kind of see which one might be a little better. While the VZ-52 was in final testing and going into production, actually work had begun already on this rifle here. Its primary designer was Mr. Cermak, and the first real earliest kind of prototype in this lineage was the CZ-515 out of 1951. This was a select fire open bolt gun chambered for 7.62 by 45 the Czech rifle cartridge at the time. 
and it was the earliest of this. Unfortunately, it did not meet the Czech Army's accuracy standards. So, next came the CZ-522, the second model of 1952, which went to a closed bolt design, and this gave much better accuracy. And actually, the 552, or excuse me, the 522 would be tested, 1953 and in the 1954, against a few other Czech designs. And while it wasn't really ready for prime time, it was perceived as a good, promising design, not only by the Czechs themselves, but actually Soviet observers. However, in 1954 and 1955, quite a bit changed. For one, because communism, all of the, more or less up until that point, private arms manufacturers in Czechoslovakia were shut down, and efforts were consolidated into Constructa Bruno, kind of a central arms design bureau, which really is what we know today as CZ. It wasn't exactly CZ, but you get the idea. Mr. Cermak went to work there a short time after it was founded. Also, the Soviets had always not been happy with the 762 by 45 cartridge, but by 55 they said, no, 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 you, you have to adopt 762 by 39 even though technically it was an inferior round. They wanted the Warsaw Pact to be standardized. This is actually where the VZ-52-57 self-loading rifle arose from. But what really was the problem, 52 and into 50, excuse me, 55 into 56, the Soviets were quite slow in getting the, the, the data, the technical data package, the, the specs for the 762-39 cartridge over to the Czech, uh, the Czech designers. So it kind of stalled out development of the CZ-522 and even kind of stalled having the 52, the, the VZ-52, 57 into production for a couple of years. They just didn't have what they needed, so they, just, they were waiting on the Soviets. Well, finally in 56, the Soviets got all the data over, and the Czechs started manufacturing their own cartridges. And the next in this series was the SA-56 prototype. This was the first to be chambered for X-39, and had some further evolutionary developments. However, it was still not quite there. The, the 56 was on a machined receiver, but it was still a hammer-fired gun. It's still fed from steel magazines. Different, but similar to Kalashnikov. However, the Czech military really wanted a light, short gun. Something almost akin to a large submachine gun. So, they really needed to lighten up the design, and they still preferred accuracy. So, next we have the SA-58 prototype, which is the immediate forerunner to this, and essentially this gun here. Things they did. They kept the machined receiver, but they got rid of, they got rid of a lot of weight by putting lightning cuts in it. Into the sides. They also went from a hammer-fired system to a striker-fired, kind of like a Glock. This saved weight. It also made the receiver more compact, and it actually led to better accuracy. And, because a soldier needs multiple, you would think going from the original steel mags to alloys such as these would not be a huge deal. But I mean, when a soldier carries four to eight mags, just a few ounces difference really does end up mattering. So this was tested and adopted as the SA VZ-58 in 1958 and was put into production the next year. Now, for a full feature and disassembly, I can't really do it here today, guys, because I'm doing this one-handed, but we have videos on it. Definitely, you probably want to check out the comparison with the Kalashnikov video if you haven't. It really is an excellent design. 
Whereas something like the VZ-52 rifle, you can say, well, it has some pros and cons over the SKS. This gun here has a lot of pros. For one, it's really a lightweight critter. It's only about 6.4 pounds unloaded, so much lighter than the original milled AK Type 3, even a little bit lighter than the stamped AKM. It's also quite short. Now this one here, unlike the first one we saw in the video, does have the original 15.4 inch barrel. Which gives it an overall length when the fixed stock mode of just over 33 inches. The folder is also 33 inches with the stock deployed. And when you fold it up, if I can do it, yeah, I don't think I can I, with one hand, guys, because this, this is a stiff one here. Anyway, sorry. You've seen it in other videos. It goes down to 25 inches, so just over two foot. It had very good accuracy. The striker system gave it a nice trigger. It also has a last round bolt hold open. And... Just in case, it can be topped off by 10 round stripper clips. Similar to SKS clips, but a little bit different. Because this is the checks, everything had to be a little different. We have a much more ergonomic fire selector here. Thumb style. If this were a full auto, it would rotate further. We have a flapper mag release at the trigger guard. These did have threaded barrels, 14 by 1 right hand. The bayonet lug you saw. It's a short stroke gas piston. So kind of like an SKS or an FN FAL or many, many others. The bolt system is very unique. It's a falling wedge type, which gives it great accuracy because the bolt never really has to rotate or tip up or down. The bolt just goes straight back. Think of kind of like a P38 or a Beretta 92 operating system, but in a rifle. So this also helped contribute with a very smooth action and uh, good accuracy. There were two primary versions made. The original is the VZ-58P with the fixed stock here. We had the VZ-58V for airborne side folder. There was a third version put into relatively limited production called the VZ-58PI. And that just meant it had a scope rail on the side, similar to the one on this here. And this was a pretty successful gun. Between 1959 and 1984, what we'll call CZ Constructor Bruno, would produce over 920,000, so almost a million. Obviously, the Czech military itself did not need that many. Many of these were exported. Now, they didn't get used by major nations, I guess you could say, but they were used heavily in Grenada, Iraq, Cuba was another major user, and they just kind of appeared all over Africa and East Asia, including in Vietnam. They were popular because of their reliability and just how well made they were. The fact that they did use the standard Soviet cartridge, but they weren't a Russian gun. Politically, it was a little easier for some countries to use a Czech gun than a Soviet gun at the time. I'm sure you can kind of understand why. This would remain the standard issue rifle in Czechoslovakia until it dissolved all the way through the end of communism. Even afterwards, into the well into the 90s and 2000s, this would be the standard issue rifle in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. It really didn't get replaced officially in the Czech Republic until 2011. Even then, there are still a few 
in inventory that aren't scheduled to be phased out until next year, 2020. In Slovakia, it lasted even longer. It was not officially replaced until 2015, so just four years ago. And many are still in service as they phase in with the newer guns. So they really had something neat here. Well, let's get into a few of the nuts and bolts and changes that happened with the design over the 25-year production period. Alrighty, then we'd flip them over here. One of the earliest and, of course, the most noticeable changes. Originally, these had wood furniture made out of a relatively lightweight but still quite durable beech wood. That was really the only, that was kind of early production. They would stop doing that in the early to mid 60s and go over to the wood chip as you see here with this one. And this would actually change over time. Earlier wood chip furniture would have more wood, less polymer. And as time would go on, it would have more polymer and smaller, kind of more wood. It would go from kind of chips to um, sawdust, almost, almost stuff. So the later stuff is a little smoother, a little more of a matte finish, and more of a consistent red or brown even, whereas the earlier stuff tends to be more of the of the beaver barf, of the Slim Jim, more kind of lumpy in, in different colors. And, and colors can range from almost purple to brown to red, or so I am told. This stuff is easier to manufacture than the original wood. It's also a little lighter weight, but really it's more durable. This stuff really holds up well. You don't often see this stuff split or cracked even on well-used kits. Another pretty easy change to see are the front sights. This has an open-topped sight protector, kind of AK style. And early on, they would not have these cutouts, these grooves, these lightning cuts, then they would add these. It's kind of a mid-generation base. And then if I can show you, if not you saw it earlier, they would keep the lightning cuts of course, and they would go to a, a loop, a closed front sight base, very much like a Chinese Type 56. At least that's kind of how I always think of it. So that's a thing to, you know, that happened. The front sling swivel. Earlier ones were this kind of machined keyring type. And later ones, and I think I've got this flip where you can't see it well, but I apologize are this stamped kind of T-shaped that has a split in the middle where you can get it on and off the gun. The slings themselves also changed. Early ones were more of a cotton canvasy type. Later they would have a few different patterns of this kind of more nylon type. I'm sure this was good for kind of mold resistance and whatnot. Kind of reminds me of the anti-mold stuff you see on Polish gear. They would still have the tabs in the front. That wouldn't change a heck of a lot. Very simple, kind of thin but usable sling. Probably next, another big change. They would change the mag catch and the trigger guard. This one has the early style guard with kind of the somewhat exposed catch. 
later they would go to kind of the split trigger guard with a hump and a somewhat smaller and more protected mag catch. They would also add to this uh, small hole in the caulking handle. It's kind of a lightning cut. The rear sight would change a little bit too. It would gain some grooves. Actually, I think the groove on that came early, and I think this the, when they kind of took the little lightning groove away was later as a machining change. Could be wrong on that, guys. Internally, there'd be a few differences. The striker would change a little bit with the fluting, for example. The receiver machining would change a little bit. And they would go from the muzzle nut you saw on the first gun and start kind of issuing these so-called beer can brakes later on. There are some other differences. The gas block changed a bit. This one has a little bit different gas block than this one. I think there's three, maybe four gas block variants. But really, the major changes were the furniture and the front sight and the trigger guard mag catch. Functionally, there were never any changes. And most of these changes were aimed at streamlining production, of course. As, you know, we often see. The mags themselves did not change. 30 rounds was the standard. However, the mag pouches, there are some variations. Here's your typical leather one. Holds four. You can tell a check mag pouch because they're curved. They also made a canvas pouch here. Kind of the same material as the sling, but it's got leather trim. It also holds four, so it's pretty much the same. Just a different material. And there's a couple of other different patterns in the leather, and there's even kind of a pleather one. The bayonets, too, went from early on having a wood grip to a one made of the beaver barf, the Bakelite. Although all the scabbards I've had were still leather, but that's not to say they didn't have canvas or something else. It's just the ones I've all had come in all then. Yeah. The finish has always been this very good, kind of semi-shiny type. It'll kind of range from almost black, dark gray, to very light, almost battleship gray. And sometimes, you know, it would be a little more or less glossy. Anyone who's owned a VZ-52 pistol knows the finish I am talking about. Well, let's move on, shall we? I thought you might like to see the bayonet on the gun. The typical surplus bayonet. Notice it doesn't have a ring. It actually slides off at the back. It doesn't install from the front, so it's a pretty unique bayonet. And I think the reason behind this was to save on weight further on the soldier's kit. Interestingly, the fins definitely were inspired if didn't outright copy this type of bayonet when they made one for their RK-62, their Valmet. Another accessory I wanted to show was the drop case issued for the VZ-58V, the airborne model. Pretty neat. I got this thanks to a friend. This actually came directly out of the Czech Republic. It buckles over like this. Has a little bit of adjustment, I think, to allow it to hold the 
muzzle brake or not. It's got this very thick kind of boot made of leather on the end. And I think this is funny for a strap for the airborne soldier. They literally just used a sling, a second sling on this. And I'm sure you could, you know, if you didn't want to have your sling on your gun in the pouch, you could put your sling on the outside and then put it on the gun after you were deployed. Or you could just have two slings. <laughs> I just think that's a very interesting use. It's a really cool pouch. I like neat pouches. How about you? The other thing is, unlike an AK pouch, there's not a spot for a magazine in it. So you'll have to put that in your, your belt pouch. Well, that's pretty much it for the military service, at least just for this every visit. Again, if you want to see more, especially disassembly and mechanics, you can check out the videos. But let's move on to the semi-autos we've seen in the USA over the last 20 or so years. So what about semi-auto VZ-58s in America? We've had them for quite some time, but they've always kind of been a, a little bit of a niche item. Not always well known. The earliest ones were put together from uh, parts kits. These were done by Ohio Ordnance Works, OOW, the folks who did quite a few 19, 19 builds amongst other things, and I believe they appeared around 2003. I know they were still, during the assault weapons ban, the model name they used was VZ-2000. These had the original 14 point, excuse me, 15.4 inch barrel. They were built on a U.S. made machined receiver. And because it was during the assault weapons ban, the muzzle nut was an extension pinned on. The bayonet lug was shaved off. And if you bought a folding stock version, the stock would have been pinned and welded in the opened position. These were extremely pricey but they were the only game in town. They were around 1500 well over a 1000 And so I really don't know when they quit assembling them. It was a boutique item. However, in very late 2006, our first Czech, true Czech import guns came in. And the first importer, believe it or not, was Century Arms. These check guns were made by D Technic in Jablonka, Czech Republic. And what D Technic had done a few years earlier, they had produced the rights to the V they had uh, excuse me, purchased the rights to the VZ fifty eight from Bruno from what we know as C Z. They got whatever parts, tooling, data that was left over because they quit making it in 84 for the military. And they had been planning to phase it out of military service for quite some time, although it took longer, I think, than they expected. Anyway, D-Technic became a private company, and they set out to, um, to do semi-auto sporting VZ-58s for the civilian market in Europe and in North America. They also would do the VZ-61 Scorpion, but that's a story for another day. When imported into the U.S. by Century, beginning in early 2000s, well, they came in in late 6, as they started to sell them in 2007, I bought one. My sales rep over at Century knew I loved the VZ-58, and, you know, when they finally came in, I was thrilled. But they came in as sporters. Now what they did to make it a sporter, the bayonet lug was machined off and to get the barrel to 16 inches they took just a simple plain extension, screwed it on, it was about an inch long and they, they welded it in place. The front end was pretty much identical except it came in with black polymer handguards 
they took a single stack clear 10 round magazine but what was fun if you looked at the receiver there were still kind of lines that told you exactly where to cut if you wanted to hog it out for a double stack also the bolt was shaved for single stack however it would still work with a double stack mag maybe not perfectly but it worked very well they had the hole and everything down here for the pistol grip but they were missing this bracket at the very top this which is part of the trigger guard that had to be added but you didn't need it to put a pistol grip on the trigger guard and the screw would hold it on just fine it was a square cut receiver and even though it had a thumb hole stock in the back, you could just take it off and put on a grip. And everything. So the, the back part was very easy to do. Putting on military handguards was easy to do. And really even opening up the magwell was pretty darn easy. The problem was Century didn't do that. They just sold them as straight sporters. D-Technic SAVZ58 sporters. They came in a foam box with two mags, a mag pouch, a sling, and a cleaning kit. And at that time, there weren't really many professionals, none that I knew of, converting them. So I did it myself, along with help from a local machine shop where I lived, who actually specialized in motorcycles. But I showed them exactly what I needed done. They were a good place that followed instructions and had good tools. And they machined it out, test fired it, it ran great. By the way, they were gun people. <laughs> so uh, we had no problems. It... Um, was Jim Dandy. Now that isn't this gun here, but it was very similar. This is a checkpoint gun that was sold a couple of years ago, but it was based off the original D-Technic imports. So since Century wasn't interested, an interesting arrangement happened. CZ USA took over essentially branding and marketing but Tennessee Gun and Checkpoint, both in Knoxville, Tennessee, took over importation and conversion. So from 2007 to about 2010, the VZ-58 military was sold under the CZUSA label, even though that's about all they had to do was sell it. They, they weren't made in the Czech Republic by... CZ Bruno. They were made in Jablonka by a D-Technic. And they look very similar to this gun here. You could buy them with Bakelite furniture, wood furniture, or a folding stock. Now they would usually leave the original extension on because at this time they still had the original 15.4 inch barrel. But sometimes Checkpoint would pin on a beer can break like this which is a military type brake and when it's pinned on it gives it an overall length of about 17 inches again they would open them up for standard mags and they would ensure they would feed from stripper clips and they'd put in the the standard bolt and all that good stuff for US parts because we have a pinned on device we only need four so the parts they went with were the trigger group magazine follower and magazine floor plate everything else was check and in the early days 2007 2008 these guns were pretty much all original vz58 select fire military parts either reconditioned or just an excellent unused issued condition so you had the original check chrome lined cold hammer forged barrel original furniture original bolt group dust cover recoil system so on and so forth the only really new semi-auto parts were the check machined receiver and of course the trigger group as I mentioned And that was pretty much the status quo for some time. But then CZ USA dropped out, leaving Tennessee Gun and Checkpoint. 
But then Tennessee Gun got into some legal trouble over some AK shenanigans, and I believe they went out of business around 2011, leaving Checkpoint pretty much alone. Also, a company, Waffenworks, was involved for a time, but yeah, that's a story for another day. So by 2011-2012, Checkpoint USA was the pretty much the importer and remanufacturer and marketer of the VZ58 semi-auto. Also around that time, D-Technic changed their name to Czech Small Arms, CSA. I think to be a little more international, you know, a less Czech sounding name, more international sounding name. And they began to use some, uh, some parts that they manufactured themselves as they ran out of military surplus parts in excellent condition. And I can tell you, the, the people at, at uh, CSA, D-Technic, had very high standards for the parts. So if they weren't in pristine condition, they would not use them. However, U.S. manufacturers weren't as picky. Century Arms would start manufacturing what they called the VZ-2008 Really, I started to see them around 2009, but between then and about 2013, they would manufacture their own guns using surplus kits. Sometimes the parts would be in good shape, sometimes well-worn. Since it was Century, they would, you know, parkerize everything in that Century park we know. These Century guns would be built on what they considered a milled receiver, but really what it was most of the time was a cast receiver that was machined out to final shape, although I think some of the Ohio Ordnance receivers that they used, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that, not Ohio Ordnance, excuse me, Ohio Rapid Fire, O-R-F, ORF, receivers, might have actually been true machined, but then they had other issues. These Century guns would have a 16 and a quarter inch barrel, U.S. made, non-chrome lined and button rifled, so the barrel and receiver would be U.S. And they, they, were, they were priced fair for what they were. They really were. But they had some issues. I think the main issue really though was the VZ2008 just didn't have the feel. The nice smooth feel of the original. It was a little rougher. Not as reliable. Had what people came to call the Gremlin. There was just kind of an intrinsic issue with the semi-auto trigger group they were using. Now D-Technic... CSA resolved it by putting a push-down plate, but yeah. Now this gun here was actually assembled in the U.S. by Checkpoint, but it was used on a real imported receiver, a virgin receiver, with an original 15.4 inch chrome lime cold hammer forward check barrel so again they pinned on the extension or the uh, muzzle brake the benefit to doing this is you still have the bayonet lug and you didn't really have to worry about you know unneutering an import gun so it's all check but it was put together here and Checkpoint says that they were trained, their, their gunsmiths were trained by the folks over at CSA. And I have no reason to doubt them. They seem decent people. Either way, these are well put together. They've offered these on and off for a, a long time, frankly. As they get kits in good enough condition and as they have receivers to do. Although I haven't seen them in a number of years now. You notice this one has the uh, scope rail on the side. Ohio Rapid Fire would do their own VZ-58 builds. But they only do them for a couple of years. And as I said, Century would get out of the game around 2013. However, they would still be selling off old stock for a year or two after that. And prices would get very low on the VZ-2008. And of course, there are plenty of other small-time kit builders, and other vendors like CNC Warrior would make U.S. receivers. So there was kind of a little bit of a booming thing for manufacturing these for some time. In 
And now we're kind of back, as I promised at the beginning, to today. And the current checkpoint guns and check small arms guns. At the beginning of the video, I showed you the military select variant with the Bakelite beaver barf wood chip furniture. This is another similar variant. This is just the VZ-58 military. As you see, maybe. I'm trying my best. <laughs> it has Czech small arms. It also has this kind of cool line crest for the Czech Republic. These are still made over, just like the originals. The receiver is the same, except the markings, of course, have changed. Also, note, the receiver on this one is just smooth here. On the newer ones, and they've been doing this for a number of years, they actually have the receiver drilled and tapped. So if you want, you can install a scope rail, scope mount, like you saw on the kit gun I just took off the table. This is the same type of handguard that the Sporter originally came with. And as I said, it came with a thumbhole stock. But if we were in a country where thumbhole stocks weren't required, this is the type of furniture. Just a modern black grip stock. Checkpoint will machine out the magwa that takes standard mags. This has kind of the more more matte finish, darker finish. They also would go to a new barrel. This is no longer a military barrel. It's 16.1, 16.2 inches like the first. Cold Hammer Forge chrome line still. These are actually made for CSA by Lothar Walther in Germany. They claim that they tested check barrels and tested these and had better accuracy out of these. So they contracted these out. They are still threaded as I showed at the beginning. And most recently they're adding bayonet lugs as a free upgrade. Which is pretty neat of them. A lot of the other parts now on these guns, like parts of the bolt group and the mag catch are new manufactured because they've simply run out of surplus. But they're still check parts and still a very nice high quality. One more flip over just to show you the markings on the stock. So it's an original check made stock. If you get one of the standard militaries here and then want to put the military furniture, be it the wood or the bakelite on, you can do. It takes the same furniture type. It's fully parts compatible with all the original military stuff. And it is identical to a military gun now, with the threaded barrel and the bayonet lug, except for the barrels extended out about half an inch, so you don't have to worry about pinning on a device. It takes standard mags, the bolt hold open works, the, it still can be fed from stripper clips. It's a very nice smooth gun. Some kind of ergonomics and selector. Pretty much everyone else is out of the game. Ohio Ordnance is definitely gone. Ohio Rapid Fire is gone as a company. Century discontinued the VZ 2008. So we we have Checkpoint and CSA now. And they've they still import in pretty small numbers, although they have expanded their product line. And they do compliant versions for band states. They do a version with a shorter barrel that's about 14 inches or 14 and a half with a pinned on brake. I think they call it the CQB. They will do the Bakelite military select when they get a furniture set and they do their best to kind of match the furniture pieces and once in a while they'll do the military classic whenever they can get their hands on original wood furniture in good enough shape to um, to really market it again kind of like with check 
small arms checkpoint tends to be rather picky on uh, their condition. They also have some more modern tactical ones. They'll do one with a Magpul kind of ergonomic grip and Magpul forearm. They'll do one with the collapsing buttstock that honestly isn't half bad for what it is. They even do a couple of models in FDE. In addition to their rifles here, they do have a line of pistols. They've got a compact and a subcompact pistol. And they also offer most of the same versions, not only in 76239 as all the ones we've looked at this evening, but they do some in 556 223 NATO. And they more or less feed from their own proprietary waffle mags, although they have had an AR-15 mag weld adapter available on and off over the years. So yeah, as of early 2019, checkpoints are still being made available, but in small numbers. They tend to announce them uh, Friday afternoons, Friday early evening. They usually only have two, three, maybe ten at most of something in stock, and then they sell out very quickly. So it's unfortunately a bit of a feeding frenzy. Prices today range from about a thousand bucks up to about fifteen hundred depending on the model the wood military classic ones are about the most expensive some of the tactical ones are twelve thirteen hundred this one here is one of the cheaper ones it's about a thousand fifty eleven hundred but you gotta snap them up when you can find them Anyway, now that a few more of these did come into the store, and they've got a couple of new features, I thought it was time for a 2019 update and revisit of the VZ-58. So if you're looking for something in this caliber, or even 5.56, and are a big fan of Comblock, but don't want or have enough AKs, don't want to get into ARs, this might be a fun alternative. These are very popular in Canada because of their laws, although they have to have 18 and a half inch barrels. So, there's that. But they're fun, reliable guns. And the recoil impulse is actually quite quite pleasant, considering it's just about six and a half pounds. And again, remember, it's under three inches tip to tip with a fixed stock, and, and just over two inches with a folder. Well, for more, especially disassembly and shooting, check out the playlist. We have one just dedicated to the VZ-58. And if you'd like check guns, you can check out our Czech 805 Bren Czech gun or the new Czech Bren 2 made in the Czech Republic. Okay, I couldn't resist. Been talking for a while. Can you blame me? So we do have quite a few other videos. Appreciate you tuning in. As always, if you could like, Share, subscribe, that'd be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check out the link to our Patreon page. And of course, we always love it when you comment below and we can discuss anything you'd like. This is Misha, and we will catch you very soon. Next time.